rolling. G'day guys, welcome back to Project Prado. You're watching episode three. This is all about all the power setup. Now, how do you fit a full power system in a Prado? Well, you can do that by actually removing one of the second row seats and that's exactly what we've done in this vehicle. So stay tuned guys and you will see all the details. But not only that, we have a list behind us right here about all the bits we're gonna cover in this electrical build on the Prado. All in detail, all in layman's terms so people like myself and yourself can understand it. You don't need to be an expert to follow what's going on here. So stay tuned guys and let's get into it. The box by PCS. Now this isn't just a box, this is an actual full-on workstation. So as we mentioned, we pulled the seat out, which probably saved about 20 to 30 kilos, and then we replaced it with this box, which probably weighs roughly the same. It'll be all your stuff that you need to look at and plug into. You'll have a lip all the way around the top, so you can put a charging station in there. There'll be a drawer out shelf there. So basically that whole box is not going to have any power running into it. That'll all just configure on that back wall. Yeah. And then, so at any you point that just, box can come out. Yeah, any time. Yeah, that's cool. Yep. That's cool. And you can be left, if you need to carry all the stuff, yeah. you just take the box out and you're left with the full deck. It's constructed and covered in carpet so that we can Velcro, or so Chris can, I should say, Velcro things to the side. So he's got all these cables and stuff in here. It's just being really organized and having a whole workspace. So up here, you can see there's a lip all the way around it and that's to hold all the gear in. This is where Chris does most of his charging. We'll get to the power needs later, as I mentioned. He has a laptop slot right here. Chris, you wanna pull that table out and show us where. So right there, that's his workspace. So that's when we go and review our footage, um, do a bit of you know, Lightroom, Photoshop, editing even uh, but not only that below that there's a drawer you want to get that out Chris thanks mate so this is where Chris keeps all his lenses and everything safe dust free keeps everything nice and safe and organized is the main thing the way they've constructed this box is they've allowed still space down here to put tripods and whatnot and on the back of the Prado seats you got this cargo sort of mesh here so he can still use that with that PCS workstation that you have, do you think it could also be used by the average person going camping? Could you, could you see it being purposely yeah, definitely. used for that? I've been using it for other things already, you know. Mm. I mean, it's been obviously the charging sort of area, but in between that, I've had sunscreen on it. I've had, it's just a platform, yeah, fair you enough. know. It's just, you know, yeah. use it how you want. It's probably pretty similar to that, like um, from that Black Patrol where that couple, they're traveling the world and they need the back seats, they need more storage, so they're basically yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it's pretty cool, actually. But they still they, they retain one seat. You've retained two seats. The space is really accessible. You just open the door. I mean, you can make your lunch on it, clean your baby's butt on it. <laughs> you can use it for anything, really. <laughs> okay, now it's my favourite part, the power setup. Before we jump to that, let's just mention that it was all done by Heiner at Climate Automotive Solutions. Absolute wizard when it comes to electrics. So much advice. Yeah, awesome. Let's just let Loved the work it. speak for itself. Cool. It's time to talk about the power solution that we've done inside the Prado. Let's address two things here. Number one, this is definitely not a cheap setup. This is all high quality stuff. So there's a bit of money invested into this power system. Number two, I need to address here, I'm going to cover this in complete layman's terms so regular people like myself can understand what the hell is going on. So we're not going to talk at the expert level here, we're going to talk at the regular person's level. So let's start where all power systems begin, and that is the battery. So behind here we have a, well, and Amtron battery, a 150 watt lithium battery to be exact. Now the reason why we've got lithium is because Chris can now use 80% or well, actually 100% of that power bank. Just cutting in here, welcome back to the studio, we're going to talk about some quick pros and cons to a lithium battery because a lot of people may not understand this and I totally get it because I didn't understand anything about electrics early on as well. But because I've done so many builds now, I kind of think I know a little bit but I'm no expert on this. 
Well, Chris, yeah, at the beginning I knew absolutely nothing. So I was pretty going in pretty blind, but obviously being able to chat with Heiner and yourself, um, you know, worked out, you know, what, what was going to work for this vehicle and yeah. weight was probably the biggest thing. Yes. And so lithium seemed like the, the choice. Oh yeah. 18, 19 kilos yeah. is a lithium battery. If we were going to get the same amount of power and juice usable out of an AGM lead acid, yeah. we're looking, we would have been looking at 50 to 60 kilos, possibly a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of weight saving. It is. And space as well. Yeah. But obviously it was a bit more expensive lithium so yes but he, he, here's why it's not really expensive for what you get because out of the power you get so out of a lithium you can use from from um from 100 percent down to 20 percent mm. and you can cycle that 5,000 times mm. on this particular battery four to five thousand times on an agm battery you can only go down to 50 percent four to five hundred times wow and here's the other thing so that means the cycle life is already way better in, in a lithium than an AGM, but the usable power. So an AGM, you can go down to 50%, then it drops to about 10 volts. Mm. It, it's below 12 volts, you don't want that, because mm. that's when amps rise. It's not good for your electrical system, yeah. and it just kills a battery. The lithium battery, you can take all, day, all the way down to zero. You, you, can, you can drain this battery. Wow. But ideally, you, want, you don't want to go further down than 20, because mm. then you keep the 5,000 cycles, mm. or 4,000 cycles, whatever it is and you've still got 12 volts mm. all the way down to zero that's that's why mm. so when you leave your vehicle out in a hot summer you know not only that you can charge it quicker as you notice oh uh, yeah i noticed that hey, so that was good we've had coffees this morning through the nespresso we've had charged probably oh, i think i had about six batteries on the go last night charging so drones main camera b cam uh, GoPros, you name it, it was, it was all, all charging last night um, and this morning um, I think it was around about 50-60% somewhere around there and um, then we had a few more coffees and blah 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 but um, yeah and then like I said earlier two hours later we're 100% again so how good is that? Now as you'll note we've put it into the draw system that is in the back so when we got the drawers made up we allow for that battery so the seat can also fall back and keep it in there. Let's move on to the other stuff. That's the battery covered. Now the battery needs to go into the BMS. So there is a Red Vision BMS here. So we have the fancy screen here. Um, that's about all it does. It just tells you how the battery's going, what's coming in, what's coming in from the vehicle, what's coming in from solar. Now speaking of which, the BMS, which stands for Battery Management System, I believe it's a 30, It'll draw power from the alternator at the front, send it to the back, and power that battery in the back here. So charge it up as you're driving. Now, when you're sitting around camp, there is no solar panel on this vehicle. However, the Prado is carrying a solar blanket. So a 300 watt solar blanket is more than enough to charge this battery when you're hanging around, hanging around camp. Even on an overcast day like today, that's where like a 300 watt panel comes in on its own because you don't get the 300 watts, but it'll, it'll charge sufficiently rather than a smaller blanket or a panel. From there, we can go to the inverter down here. The only reason why you need a 2000 watt inverter is to power a coffee machine or a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> he doesn't have a vacuum cleaner though. Or do you have a vacuum cleaner? Uh, no him, vacuum so cleaner. I would say he's nodding. Also, he's Nutribullet and milk frother. So he does use a fair bit of that inverter. I had a coffee this morning actually, I had two coffees. It's always good when someone else has a coffee machine. I wouldn't drive around with one myself though. Coming from the inverter, we've got this cube right here. So that Velcro's down to this table here and this is where Chris can plug all these charges into. Now bearing in mind with a 2000 watt inverter, you can't run a coffee machine and a neutral bullet and an ice machine and a milk frother all at the same time. You got to run one thing at a time, otherwise it'll just cut out. So 2000 watt inverter, you can run one of those things. All right, moving on. We have the Egon system. This is a central power hub. So every single thing that's connected to the power goes through this right here. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of fuses in here. So what this does is it just creates well, it prevents messing, uh, like a mess of wires. So everything goes to here, rather than having a fuse over there, a fuse over here, and a relay down here. 
So everything that's run on this vehicle, from the BMS, the battery, the inverter, all these charge points here, the lights on the outside, the compressor as well. Everything is run through this system here. I really reckon they should call that the flux capacitor. <laughs> should there be a short circuit in the system, one of these fuses will blow and one of these little LED lights will illuminate and you can tell exactly which fuse has blown. Now on top of that, Chris has a whole list that explains to him every single input that's in here, where it goes to. So you, you've got big fuses, small fuses, and a whole bunch of spare fuses as well. So everything goes to here, and then gets distributed out to where it's needed. Up here we got the USB ports, a couple of SIGI lighter ports here. Um, well, 12 volt DC, I should say, not SIGI. We got two Anderson plugs here. The reason for these Anderson plugs here is, say on a really hot summer's day, Chris wants a fan up in his rooftop, he can run it into here and have power up there, run the, run the fan up there if it's too hot. There's so much going on here, guys. This box up here, I'll probably better talk about that too. You can see it's all black. It's actually covered in Linex, so this was stainless steel. We didn't just Linex the control panel. We also Linex the bracket for the awning and the side steps. We'll get to those later. And a spoiler alert, we Linex some stuff on the 79 as well. Chris preferred this black. And I reckon it looks pretty mint because it kind of matches the hammer tone black paint on the, on the back of the drawer system here. And uh, yeah, it's come up a real treat. Finally, to top everything off, we got a little light here. So for when Chris is working on this bench top here, he can go from white to red so he can retain his night vision, but more importantly, to get less bugs coming into the vehicle. So red will reduce that drastically, but won't eliminate it. Now time to talk about the reversing camera because we've had to move it because before that it was behind this bin bag which you might be able to see just in the edge. So it's on a K-on bracket. So the K-on bracket is right here and it bolts to where the number, number plate sits in. Very quick mod to do, you don't have to do any wiring or anything, it's just bolting a bracket on. Now the reason why we had to do this is because on the wheel carrier, that's where the existing uh, camera sits. So in the middle of the wheel. Obviously when you put a bin bag on, you lose your camera. So that has sorted that issue out because for a while we hadn't put that on, Chris struggled to reverse. Sheepskins in the Prado. Was gonna get canvas. Did a lot of outback traveling, so figured that they would be the better choice, but had a really good chat to Zev, he is from um, family owned business, Prestige Sheepskins, and uh, he recommended, you know, go with Sheepskins um, for a few reasons. One of them being um, that they're really cool in summer and warm in winter, that's a bonus. The fact that they're really good at noise dampening as well in the cab. The other thing is they feel really good, they're super soft. Um, I think they look awesome in the Prado. And I've had canvas seats before, and honestly, I do not think I'd go back to canvas. Remember, just watch that water tank as my uh, tail comes down. Oh, you're using your thighs a bit too. Oh, about time. You're all good in the back, just your toe ball's gonna hit. Yeah, keep going, keep going. You're just ploughing it a little bit, it's all good. Water tank is heaps of clearance, all safe. Yep. Nice, that was cool. Keep that angle. It's so handy having a radio on board, especially in situations like that. Um, just being able to communicate with the outside. I was a little bit worried about my undercarriage, especially the water tank at the back. So, you know, it's just essential. Before we go into where the antenna is located on the Prado, because that's quite important, let's talk about which radio is actually in the car, Chris. The one that I stole from you. Yes. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> it was meant to go on a 79 series Land Cruiser, but anyway, it got mixed up and Chris got it. So he's, he's got the brand new XRS 390 unit. It's the one that uh, can got tolerate the, a bit of water. Yeah, it's got this little waterproof sort of seals on it and stuff. I didn't plan on putting this completely underwater. Well, but we're going to have to now. <laughs> oh, You're committed now. <laughs> but not only that, this thing does GPS tracking on your app and you don't need phone coverage like the um, 
pre-versions you had to do, like the 370 and the 330, you needed phone coverage to track each other. Mm. This one, you don't need it. It cool. does it all by satellite. GME location for the antenna. That's also on a K on bracket, which ties into the whole wheel carrier system. This is probably the most ideal spot to mount it on Chris's vehicle because he has the rooftop up here. If he didn't have the rooftop tent on top of the roof rack, I would have recommended putting this onto the roof. But rooftop tent means you can't do that. So this is probably the second best place to put it. The other spot will be at the front of the vehicle. So, new spotties on the Prado. They're um, coming from a single light bar on my old Harlux. This is pretty much daylight. It's epic. Time to talk about the light setup. Now, the light setup I've recommended for Chris for his Prado is the exact same setup that I've had on my 79 for a number of years, maybe five, maybe six years even. Quite a few years anyway. So these are in fact the HX2s from Lightforce. So you've got the ring around the outside, which is your spread, that's your LED, get about 80 watts of spread, two of them. So it's like a two in one light as well, because in the middle we have HID. So the HIDs on these are less powerful than the previous HX1s, but the color of light is more matching each other, so it's much easier for your eyes. You're not, you're not having like a green and a sort of a white light as well, so they both come out quite white. A oh, HD actually, yeah, that's right. Nice. Okay. We have to see how they go with the radar crews. I think it's okay, but Chris has to go for a test drive. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you, got, you got the radar in here, yeah. but I think the beam angle is only about yeah, that wide, so it should go past it. But that's, that's why Chris went for this bar, because it's wide enough for him. Ah, so cool. They've already tested it with. Are they, okay, cool. Yeah, ARB has already tested it. Up top there, we've got two light bars. Exact same setup that's on my Land Cruiser, too. So, those light bars up there, you can see they're upside down. Now, I know people are going to say, why have you mounted them upside down? Well, the mounting system that we chose to use, you can only mount it that way. It's just a label that's the other way around. The only thing that we'll need to test on this is the wind noise. Yeah. Because you just never know. You never know. Until you test yeah, it. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, if And you're... test it when you set up with the tent as well. Because yeah, sometimes change. little things just change it dramatically. Yeah. So what I've found is um, with the rooftop on, it, it doesn't whistle, but as soon as I take it off, it starts whistling. And then I have to adjust the, the bars a little bit just to stop it from whistling. So a oh. bit of a pain in the ass, but yeah, yeah. you know. Okay. Have to work with it. Now we don't want to adjust the lights for the whistle. We want to find out where it is and try and play with some foam mm. or tape. Yeah. Gives wicked spread, eh? That light bar. Yeah. It's awesome. Um, no, it's did cool. Did you way. try and turn them on and off and see what happens? No, nah, I should have actually. That yeah. would have been. I I did it the other night though, and it's huge. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. nice being able to see that, especially in the bush. Just yeah. seeing like everything. And you probably find that on those tracks we did last night, windy, you turn your HRDs off because they're just yeah, yeah. They throw Actually, we did, didn't we? Yeah, much. we did. We did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's cool. Eh? It's spread. Coming from the Luxie with the light bar, one light, light bar. bar. <laughs> I know it's like it's like daylight. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like duh. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So as you can see, he's quite pleased with the light setup. With that front runner roof rack being a little bit further back, those lights do not interfere with the bonnet or the windscreen, which is what you want. So he's got some pretty damn good light. But as you can see up here, we have this big awning sticking out a bit. So the side light is compromised by this awning. So that light bar up there, it's not really lighting up much out to the side here. And that's what it's all about. It's all about spread on your roof. So to compensate for that, we've mounted two Rock 20s on the outside underneath the awning. You'll see more about that in episode four anyway. There's some more lights inside the awning as well. So this gives Chris that spread on the sides because you can put as much light facing forward as you like, but when there's no moon and you're driving down some dark tracks at night and you want to make a turn, if you don't have that angled light, you're risking it. You don't know what you're turning into until you've actually turned into it. 
I've had that situation in a previous vehicle before and I've adjusted my lights. We have some Rock 20s on this side as well. Now these are positioned better. Now Chris can actually reach out from the driver's seat and adjust these to throw the light around. And there's a bit of a rubber spacing in between so it's easier to twist around as well. Got some lights facing backwards. When Chris is reversing in the bush, he can turn these on and then he's got a much clearer picture of what's around him. As you'll note, we now have side protection or rock sliders or rock steps on the Prado. Now, they're much better than the side steps that were on there before, just the factory Toyota ones because they were just aluminium and they were actually getting a little bit bent up as well. Put the ARB ones on to match the bar. You'll note that the top plate has actually been Linex. It was silver and it kind of stood out like dog's balls. Dog's balls? Really? <laughs> on this Prado. So we decided to put some Linex over it. It's completely encapsulated in it and I reckon it looks much better, get a bit more grip on it. In terms of gaining clearance, we've definitely not gained clearance, but we also haven't lost clearance because it sits at about the same height. But what Chris has gained, or what the, the Prado has gained, is protection. Also retain the lights underneath. So there are courtesy lights when you unlock the vehicle or when you open the door, the lights are mounted underneath still. So they'll still illuminate the ground. Ladies and gents, that was a lot to cram into one episode. That was don't you crazy, reckon? crazy amount. Yeah, there's a lot happening. It's a big shopping trolley. It's not one of those it's, shallow ones. It's yeah, a deep yeah, shopping trolley. A, yeah. There's a lot crammed into it. Dogs, balls and everything. It was all there. It was episode all... four. The kitchen. What have people got to look forward to? Um, it's going to blow their minds. This Do you reckon is... this will be the best episode ever? Yeah, I think so. It's all coming together, you know, like, and this is just the, you yeah. know, this is the, it's like the precursor to... Tisto resistance. Yeah, yeah. that's it. <laughs> Just, I can't wait to show you guys. This is something I will legit put a game changing tag on it. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That's a big call. Don't you reckon? A big call? It is. I hey, look at it. the just kit. Didn't think you liked saying it. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, well, I like saying it when it's real. Okay, well then it's game a game changing camp kitchen for wagons. Check it out, guys. See you next time.